Lately, we haven't been seeing it. And the reason we have not been seeing it is because right now, Venus is in between the Sun and the Earth. It's doing the transit between being an evening star and becoming a morning star again, which is when it begins its new cycle. So that whole cycle, um, which is not usually talked about so much in uh, astrology from Western civilization or Vedic astrology, but it was very and is very important to Aztec and Mayan and ancient Mexican cultures, okay, the Venus cycle. Uh, it takes 584 days for the whole cycle to go, so longer than an Earth year, like a year and two thirds out. And um, for eight months, Venus will be a morning star. For eight months, Venus will be an evening star. And in between it, that those times are what are called the inferior conjunction of Venus and the superior conjunction. That's what astronomers say. So the inferior conjunction is what we're in right now. It's when Venus is passing between the sun and the earth. And it takes about 12 days for that to happen. And um, if we were closer to the equator, it would take less time, more like eight days, because of the angle of, of how you see everything from the equatorial position. Um, and if you're further up north, like in Alaska or something, mm -hmm. it would take longer than 12 days, right? Okay. So uh, obviously, in the middle of that period is the middle day, when Venus and the Sun and the Earth are exactly lined up. That's right now, as today, June 3rd. Okay. Uh, and so if we think of, you know, the evening star is like the shadow side of Venus. It's known in, in the Aztec language as Xolot. Okay, and it's symbolized by a dog who accompanies humans when they go after death into the underworld, okay? So that's the symbol of Venus as evening star. The morning star symbol of Venus is called Tlawis Kalpan Tekutli, which means the lord of the house of the red light of dawn. So it's Venus as the morning star, okay? And it's the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, the Kukul Khan is the Maya called the feathered serpent. So, that's what we are about to witness again, starting June 9th, next Tuesday. Okay. And um, so we could think of where we are in the cycle right now is at the very bottom of the wheel. We're about to start up again. So when Venus disappears as the morning star, uh, it's behind the sun, so we can't see it from Earth. And of course, the sun is huge. And so it takes longer for us to not see Venus during that time. It's gone for about two months. Okay. So that's the 584 day cycle of Venus. And there's this very cool um, <clears throat> numerical relationship between an Earth year and a Venus cycle, which is five uh, Venus cycles is exactly equal to eight Earth years. Mm -hmm. And so that five to eight relationship is used a lot in sacred architecture and um, sacred geometry. Like even in Islamic culture, it was a very important feature, is, because these are living cultures, of uh, the all the Islamic designs in mosques and things like that. Jim, yeah. I'm glad here, so that this Venus is ending its night star, but it's gonna begin the morning? Morning star, okay. next week. Yes. Yeah, so, but right now it's invisible. Invisible. Yeah. All right. So, what does this mean symbolically? I've given you sort of the astronomy of it, right? What it means symbolically, according to Aztec and Mayan tradition, uh, is this is the time when Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, who's both a mythological being or deity as well as a historical figure in um, ancient culture of Mexico. This is when Quetzalcoatl journeys through the underworld to face 
his shadows and demons to look into the mirror and see his dark side or her dark side. A Quetzalcoatl is in essence the union of all opposites. Now female day night you know, just like Venus is sometimes morning star, sometimes evening star. Earth sky, the Quetzal is a bird, Koat is the snake. So Quetzal Koat is the union of earth and sky. So we all have a um, connection with Quetzal Koat in the sense that we are the union of opposites ourselves. You know? So um, this time of journeying through the underworld to face our shadows and demons is in this particular cycle right now, really corresponding with what's going on globally and particularly in this country. Yeah? And, uh, and it's happening in our own personal lives. And this is part of what a lot of you perhaps have been feeling. I mean, we are, you know, it's as above, so below. We're affected by these movements of the stars and planets and even the galaxies, what you know, astrologers call galactic astrology. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story of uh, the historical Quetzalcoatl because it's a, a really cool story that will, I think, help illuminate some things for you. And then in the next round, we're going to do an actual ritual using the conshell uh, trumpets here, which relate to Quetzalcoatl, because if you look at a conshell, you can see it's a big spiral. So it's just like what you saw with the snake today. And the snake is spiraled, you know, it's, it's in that resting state and it represents the life force, the sacred spiral, you know. And um, the mirrors, which are on the altar, are the symbol of Tezcatlipoca. Tezcatlipoca um, means literally the smoking mirror, okay. And uh, Tezcat is the obsidian mirror that Tezcatlipoca holds up to Quetzalcoatl to see his shadow side. So crazy this morning, I had a meeting with uh, a friend and work associate, and she gave me this gift. She said, I made this for you. And it's a Buddha head made out of black obsidian. Mm -hmm. Tezcat Lee's Polka's mirror is made out of black obsidian. <laughs> so, you know, this thing, things happen in the strangest way. When you're observant, but you have to be observant because it's, it's uh, mm -hmm. otherwise you're, it's gonna go unnoticed, yeah. All right, so, um, Tezcatlipoca is connected with the Jaguar. He's a sort of shaman, astronomer figure, yeah. And the Quetzalcoatl is connected with the snake and the bird. And Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl was known as the one who opposed human sacrifice in ancient Mexico. Tezcatlipoca was the one who brought human sacrifice. Mm. So they themselves are polarity, yeah? And um, of course, what we are dealing with in our crisis in this country right now is a kind of human sacrifice. It's a form of human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When that man had his knee on the other man's neck, it was a sacrificial dark ritual. That's what it was. And that's what we're feeling. So, Sayaka uh, Topiltzin Quetzalcoatl is the historical Quetzalcoatl who lived in the 10th century. He was born in a place called Tepoztlan that maybe some of you have been to in, Me in Mexico before, it's south of Mexico City, but it's kind of like the um, counterpart to Sedona in Mexico. The colors of the rocks are not the same, but the landscape is very similar and the energy is very similar. So that's where Quetzalcoatl was born, the Sayakatopilz in Quetzalcoatl. And he uh, grew to be a very enlightened spiritual being, uh, an artist and a uh, philosopher. And eventually he became the lord or king of uh, the capital of the Toltecs, a place called Tolan, which today in Mexico we know as Tula. Okay. So um, Tezcatlipoca, energetically was his rival. And um, the name Smoking Mirror, uh, which is Tezcatlipoca's name in English, is very interesting because uh, usually Tezcatlipoca <coughs> is associated with the moon and also with um, 
the constellation of the Great Bear, the Big Dipper, mm. which is seen by the Aztecs and Mayans as a, a jaguar in the sky. Mm. Okay. But um, I, through my research and meditating on this through the years, believe that there is another astronomical symbol of Tezcatlipoca, which is the total solar eclipse, which we're about to have one coming up this month. Okay, because the, the dark mirror, the new moon, that black obsidian mirror is like the disk of the new moon, and the gases of the corona of the sun moving around it is like the smoke. Mm -hmm. And we know, symbolically in astrology, that when we have eclipses, it's a time to go inside and face what's hidden and bring it to the surface. That's exactly what Tezcatlipoca does. So we not only now have this Venus cycle that connects to the story of Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, but we have the eclipses this month mm. as well. So it's like really odd with this cosmology. So Tezcatlipoca comes to, to, to Tolan to uh, basically uh, challenge Quetzalcoatl's rule, and ch chase him out. And he's a trickster and the magician. And so what he does is he becomes, he disguises himself as a chili vendor, and he... Oh, the uh, stories do live. <laughs> <laughs> he seduces the daughter of Quetzalcoatl, okay, who, um, it's, and according to the story, he had this amazing penis. <laughs> that, he sh that he was really ugly, but he showed her his <clears throat> penis and she fell for him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. You know, ancient stories are much more colorful than a lot of our stories, because they're not shy about these things. So, so anyway, so she brings Tezcatlipoca home, and he becomes part of the royal family. Now he's Quetzalcoatl's son-in-law, and I'm giving a you know sort of speeded up version of the story. Okay, so so anyway. Uh, one night he comes to his father-in-law Quetzalcoatl and he pulls out his obsidian mirror and he says Quetzalcoatl remove your jade and turquoise mask and look into the mirror and see your true self so there was some kind of um, tragic event that happened to Quetzalcoatl when he was very young I can't remember if it was a disease or an injury or a fire or what but his face was all scarred and covered with boils and things like this. And so he always wore this mask to hide that, and he, to the point where he never even saw it himself. You know? So Tezcatlipoca convinces him to remove his mask, which this is, um, here, you can pass this around. This is a jade and turquoise mask that came from the tomb of Acal Gautan in Palenque mm. in ancient Mexico, who was another incarnation of Quetzalcoatl. So we help you to picture what these masks look like. Uh, so Quetzalcoatl removes the mask, looks in the mirror, and becomes incredibly ill because he's so horrified and nauseated by what he sees of himself that he can't deal with it and he just becomes physically ill. So at this point, he's, you know, taken to his bed and he's laying there ill, and Tezcatlipoca transforms himself into an old man. I have a drink for you, Quetzalcoatl, so you will not feel so bad, you know? And uh, So he gives Quetzalcoatl pulque, which is um, like tequila on steroids, right? <laughs> you know, from the mage cactus. <clears throat> and of course, Quetzalcoatl feels better after a while, and so he drinks some more, and, he, and the old man, Tezcatlipoca, keeps getting him to drink more and more of this pulque to the point where he becomes incredibly drunk all right so then Tezcatlipoca transforms himself again this time into the sister of Quetzalcoatl who is celibate and is uh, um, a member of a special spiritual order where they don't have sex and he so Tezcatlipoca becomes Quetzalcoatl's sister Quetzalcoatl and Quetzalcoatl is so drunk 
that oh, he no. finds her and has sex with her. Okay. And, you know, and, and they fall asleep and he, he falls asleep, you know, in this drunken stupor with his son-in-law who's disguised as Ketzer mm -hmm. Hadlaki. Now, this is a really interesting part of the story that I only recently learned, which is Hadlaku means, um, it's a mat, like a woven mat, mm -hmm. which uh, would be made of, you know, like uh, palm leaves that they used in ancient Mexico and still do today. And um, it's a metaphor for the earth itself. Quetzal not only means the bird, the Quetzal bird, it also means beautiful. And the petlak, the mat, is like the flowering earth. It's the, you know, the, all the beautiful carpet of the earth, of all the growing living things, the vegetation. So Quetzal petlak is the flowering earth. And Venus, which is Quetzalcoatl, has gone into the underworld that's hidden between the earth and the sun. So they're sleeping together, they're having sex together, is actually describing an astronomical event, which is what we have right now. Mm -hmm. The inferior conjunction of Venus with the sun when it's close you know, to the earth, when it's between the two. So uh, Quetzalcoatl wakes up in the morning, he realizes what's happened, he gets over his hangover, and he is so ashamed then he opens his palace windows and he sees that the entire city is in complete chaos and decadence and people are going crazy and robbing and stealing and fires everywhere and it's like complete chaos because he lost his center and he was the guide, so to speak, of the energy of the city. So he um, puts himself into exile and leaves Tolan and Tezcatlipoca, the Lord of Human Sacrifice, takes control of Tolan. Okay. And then there's this long story, which I won't tell the details of, where Quetzalcoatl crosses across different villages and sacred places in Mexico and leaves his mark in all these places. He finally gets to the Gulf of Mexico, what they call the Celestial Waters, and there he begins to ga gather twigs and branches and dried leaves and he builds this big funeral pyre and sets it on fire and walks into it mm -hmm. and sacrifices himself for the um, collective uh, wrongdoings of all human beings. I don't want to use the word sin because uh, I don't like that word. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a kind of Christ-like story. He self-sacrifices for all humanity. And again, we can see the parallel in this mm -hmm. one man who got killed, right. you know, um, a week ago, eight days ago. And, and the story is that uh, the fire burns for eight days, which represents that eight day period further south mm -hmm. of Venus being invisible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's said that on uh, the end of the fourth day, beginning of the fifth day, which is where we are now, mm. that birds of every color began to come out of the fire. Mm. All birds of every species and rise to the sky. And then finally, on the eighth day, the Quetzal bird, the sacred bird, mm. rose out of the flames and its heart rose into the sky and became Venus, the morning star. Mm -hmm. This is great. Cool story. Yeah. Right? So, uh, <laughs> so here in the altar are, uh, we're, we're going to do a ritual where we're going to light the sacred herbs and uh, burn a snakeskin that I brought with me. Uh, I also have on the altar two birds that died. One recently, one three years ago, uh, in my homes of different times. And when I first left to move to Sedona, in the house I was living at that time, I found a dead hum hummingbird right outside my house. Wow. And then uh, last week, while I was doing um, animal spirit reading for a friend, actually it was a couple weeks ago, uh, we suddenly heard this like boom, and this oriole flew into my living room window and died. And so 
the hummingbird, and then there's this nest of uh, house finches that laid their eggs by my house last year, but the eggs got stolen by some predator, and so those were never born. So there are these three sort of bird energies of, of loss or death mm. that are there. The positive, uh, not, I don't even want, it's all positive, but the, the sort of happy, bright side of it all, I could say, is that uh, shortly after discovering the dead Oriole, I discovered that uh, a uh, mother dove, morning dove, had built a nest right outside my back deck uh, on the swamp cooler and uh, her eggs hatched and I now have two baby doves <laughs> there in the nest. Nice. Yeah. So, so anyway, so there's the snake and the bird energy here. And um, the conch shells, as I said, which represent Quetzalcoatl, it said that uh, when we sound the conch shell, it calls for the return of Quetzalcoatl into the world to bring back that union of opposites energy and um, and then the mirrors are for us to look into our our shadow side mm -hmm. and and there's an actual obs obsidian stone there with a feathered serpent carved on it and uh, another image of Hakal from uh, Palenque in Mexico who was the incarnation of Quetzalcoatl so I am going to uh, pass you all a conch shell or a mirror and um, we can do a meditation and I'm going to play during that meditation these two instruments this is actually they're both on over 500 years old they're, they're original ancient instruments so they will carry the ancestor vibration for us and sound to uh, help us through these times. You know, the ancestors are always here to help us. And uh, again, this is a conch shell, so connected with Quetzalcoatl, and the bat is one of the animals connected with Tezcatlipoca with the dark side. And the coronavirus. And apparently. the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And shamanism. Uh, so uh, what we'll do, we'll each have time with a conch shell and each have time with a mirror because after a certain point, we can pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? Okay. Okay. So.